But you know what? I want to bounce on over to uh, Morgan. Uh, Morgan is a new author. She came and read, uh, uh, I believe, last week. Uh, but the reason I'm, I'm, I'm excited about Morgan reading is the number of she has a great, re, a great book. Uh, but it also will help, I think, by listening to newbies a lot of times, um, it'll help all of us kind of rethink the way that we, we, we perform, we project. But Morgan, are you there? I'm here, Andy. <laughs> are you ready? Why do you keep putting me on the spot? This is the second time you done did this. I'm thinking my ear ain't gone. It's family. It, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Go Good ahead and uh, introduce yourself again. Uh, Good evening. Tell them, the, tell them the book and, uh, you know, what, what inspired you to read, uh, uh, become an author. Okay. Wait, Morgan, did you, wait, I'm sorry. Morgan, did you say you was taking your earrings off? Girlfriend, my earrings is off. <laughs> Okay, I, I heard that. I caught that. That's some fighting words when a woman take her earring off. She'll get ready. You gotta watch it, Andy. Andy, you stepping on some toes. Wow. 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 My bad. My bad. I already got the Vaseline ready. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, mm. now. Excuse my voice again tonight. Um, It was my son's birthday on Christmas. So um, I did a lot of celebrating, screaming, and hollering, and singing. So I apologize if my voice is not appropriate this evening. Um, again, my name is Morgan Reese. I am a new author. I published my book back on December 16, 2020, when COVID hit. I've held on to the book for about nine or 10 years, and it took me up until COVID to come for me to finally get it published. Um, I'm still in this learning journey with uh, on the author side, on the um, promoting side. So coming to this platform is a big guidance and a big... Um, footprint for me as I move forward in my chapter in 2023. As Indy said, it's a new year. It's a new time. It's still my season. It's going to be a That's better right. season. Um, I have three adult children. Uh, my, As I said, my son just turned 30. My oldest is 31. She'll be 32 in April. I have 25-year-old who'll be 26 in April. And I have three amazing grandkids, um, eight-year-old grandson, seven-year-old granddaughter and a feisty old five-year-old and a, and a mind and her body. She acts like she's 10. She's only two. She'll be three on March the 7th. Um, my book is basically about my journey in life of how all the things that I went through, everything, all of my journeys, all of my chapters that I've experienced in life, it didn't bring me down. It didn't keep me down. Um, I was told a lot of times in my life, all the things that I've been through, I should not be this happy, bubbly person. I should be still a victim, whether I'm strung out on drugs, um, in a mental facility because it does run in my family, or just, just an unhappy, bitter, sad person. But I want to show to others that no matter what you go through in life, and I promise you, life is nothing but a roller coaster ride. Even the rich people go through things, they just don't tell you that. You don't know until... Either they've overdosed or it's been broadcasted on some news net, um, media platform. But I wanted to tell everyone else that no matter what you go through, whatever you deal through in life, I promise you, God has your back. I'm a true testament that he shows you how much he loves you and he really shows you how much he listens to you. And that's what my book is about. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, look, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you. The one and only Morgan Reese. Thank you guys again, again for the invite, Andy. I really appreciate this. You guys don't even know how much this means to me. Okay. Yes, my mother also had her share of troubles with her sisters and her mother. And even though she treated me the way she did, she still was my mother and I still had to be there for her. Until this day, I can remember my mother telling me how bad some of her sisters treated her and even me when I was a little girl, when we were still living in New York. I'm going to give you a little history about my mother's family life. From what I was told by my mother and other family members, my mother was given away when she was little, but no one really knows what age because she was out of the family for a long time. Later, I discovered that she was given to her great aunt who was on her mother's side of the family. So for most of my mom's childhood and some of her teenage life, 
she was not with her family. Then at 16 years old, my mother went, ran away from the lady who was taking care of her. Later, I found that this woman was the aunt of my mother's mom. So she was not a stranger. Then this, then this aunt took my mom back to be with her family. But mysteriously, they had moved to a different location. Once mom finally realized, well, finally located them, her sisters didn't seem thrilled to see her at first. I guess because they really did not know her. And she was absent for her family for so long. I mean, can you imagine your mother having three children at first from her first marriage, then eight other children from her second marriage, and suddenly a new child pops up out of nowhere. And the only one that knows her, only one that knows you are your two older sisters. That can be very scary and devastating at the same time. But it never justified their behavior and treatment of her and I. Well, eventually, her sisters and brothers finally accepted her after about two years. She got pregnant with me, and that was another shock to the family. Not because my mother was pregnant, but because the child she had was not the perfect child. I was a child who had a terrible skin, disor skin disorder, eczema. And the way her sisters dealt with it was very mean and cruel. From what I was told by my mother when I was little, some of our sisters used to set me out on the steps with the dog and make me drink my milk with the dog in the winter, all because they were afraid of my skin and they did not understand what was going on with me. Then there, were times, one, then there was one time that my mother told me that one of her sisters threw me down the stairs from the third floor for no apparent reason. On another occasion, they cut off all my hair to make me look like a boy. I was told to cut up my clothes when people were buying them for me. Also, my family was famous for giving everyone in the family nicknames, and mine was Muffin. Not, not a good name. For years, I always asked what, that, what the meaning was behind the nickname, and I was always told that I, when I was younger, I used to hold onto a broom like a baby monkey. Sadly, later I found out the real meaning behind the nickname. I will come back to that later in the story. So that put my mother at terrible odds with some of her sisters, even when she got older, especially with her second older sister, Aunt Tracy. The reason I say that say that was we knew Aunt Tracy was 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 known for being the bully of the family. And she always thought she was the toughest one, even tougher than her younger brothers. So even though Aunt Tracy had been in our life for a very long time, she had her moments where sometimes you did not want to be around her or she made others fear her. And when my mother moved back down south, that was one moment. When my mother got sick and moved down south with her mother, it took her longer than normal to get herself together mentally. The reason was because it seemed like her mother had a stronghold over her. I do not know how or why, but she did. But eventually I talked my mother into getting herself together, not just for her, but for my sister and brothers. Well, after my mother finally got herself together, she moved back out on her own. But it seemed like her problems got worse because she let Aunt Tracy and some of her kids move in. Aunt Tracy could help her get herself together, but it seemed like Aunt Tracy took, her, took over her house and my mother was feeling scared like a prisoner in her own house. So me being the oldest, I took it upon myself again to go down south and get my mother. But this time I went into the middle of the night, drove for about, about eight hours, packed up the car, turned right back around and brought it back to Philadelphia to get her away from Aunt Tracy. I brought her to live with us for six months. Remember earlier in my story, I told you I'll explain the reason behind my nickname that I did not like. I traveled to, to, to New York to visit my Uncle Brad and was talking to him about my life and childhood to get more clarification on why my family treated me so badly. So I asked where the nickname Muffin came from. And my Aunt Felicia burst out with a hearty laugh and said, oh, I'm so sorry you had to go through that with your family. Then she explained my, my name came from a baby gorilla that was born in a Brooklyn Zoo the same year I was born. And the gorilla's name was Muffin. She said she knew my Aunt Tracy was known for giving family members nicknames. And she said, I look so ugly because of my skin condition that I look like that baby gorilla. And that was my, my nickname. I thought to myself, this family was evil. How could they treat a child this way? It was not my, my fault that I was born with this skin condition. Anyone there? <laughs> Everyone's quiet. <laughs> Andy, you still not ready again? No, no. Look, look. I was. <laughs> I like I was, it. Did I everyone was, drop the phone? <laughs> no, girl. Between, we are. Between, we are here. We, between wait. muffin 
and uh, throwing you down the three flights of stairs. I was waiting on the rest of it. I'm like, so where's the net? Me too. Now, now, baby girl, you gotta get the book and find out the rest. <laughs> That's my girl. So on my podcast, I give you the rest. That's my girl. Wait, I'm gonna go first. Look, we thought we didn't I'm, know you was finished. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I was. That was a clip. The voice that, the voice that Laquita was talking about. It was going. I was ready. I'm like, I'm ready to fight. Who is this? I know. Uh, I know. What in awesome, the world? Uh, but an awesome read. But I, I'm not going first. I heard somebody said they're going first. So I'm Laquita going. said it. I'm on the- back, back from the queen. Go ahead, queen. <laughs> Listen, uh, Melanie, you're so funny. But Morgan, you know, Morgan, I, I remember your read from last week. And, and and by the way, I got your message, so we'll talk. Okay. But I, I want to say again, and I think I said this in my comments last week, uh, I appreciate your your transparency and I appreciate your strength for sharing your story because there are so many who will not share their stories. I, I thank you. And, and you, you know, as you were reading, uh, again, there are stories, you know, we are multitaskers. That's we, that's what we are. We walk and chew gum at the same time, oh, but there are stories and there are times when people, when people talk, like for instance, when the voice started talking about, um, bestseller and it, it made me stop doing everything I was doing and listen intently. When you started talking, I remembered your story from yesterday, from last week, and I wanted to hear more of it. So I was listening intently. And then when you started talking about Muffin, I started thinking about my own nickname. And then I was holding on to your every word because I wanted to see when you said, I'll come back to that part later. And I'm like, Melanie, I'm like, man, I cannot stand when people mistreat children because mistreated children turn into angry hurt adults Adults. and i am so so very thankful that you are sharing your story because the only way to get past some of that is to talk about it not keep it inside so i am so I, i i am just so blessed to be here on this call tonight this last book slam of the year to hear your story because there is somebody who is going to listen to this replay and they are going to be grateful because you have given them the strength that they need to talk about their story so i commend you i thank you and i will be buying your book honey i i don't know i think i may have already bought it i think so (laughs) i don't know about books every week so i have i don't know but I, I am so so. Thank you so much. That was that was amazing. That and I'm so sorry. That so sorry. You should never have had to go through that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. More you the know. crazy, the crazy part about it is because Morgan and I have actually had uh, longer conversations. You all have only heard a sliver, <laughs> <laughs> a slice, a a a, a, cr- a modicum of um of 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 her this her story is just honestly for lack of a better term insane uh it's 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 just it's, oh wow but uh, melody book, go ahead. look for the second book look for the second yeah. book yeah <laughs> melody what did you think about uh, morgan's read uh her read was powerful i know she said to excuse her voice but i think the raspiness of her voice just commanded more attention i loved it um and I just commend you for being able to be so transparent through your pain. A lot of times when we go through painful things, we internalize it and we think that, okay, if I let people know what I've gone through, it makes me look weak or it makes me look um, diminished. But for you to be so transparent and let us in on the feelings that you went through, through all that pain that you went through as a child, it helps us to understand how you become such a powerful adult that you are. And I just thank you for being transparent through that pain to let us experience that with you. And I love your read. I love your read. And I can't wait for book two. <laughs> I really appreciate that, Melanie. Um, believe it or not, I was not always this outspoken for years. Um, I would keep a lot to myself because, again, it came from a family that, you know, even if you said something, it wouldn't matter. And then... I would tell people who I thought was close to me. And then I stopped telling because I didn't know 
some of those people I couldn't trust because they would use it against me. Like my ex-husband, he would use my pain or my, my super dysfunctional family against me and our relationship or um, other people who I thought were friends. I'm thinking I'm going to them for guidance and wisdom. And one minute it would start off like that and then it wouldn't be. So I had to find my own strength besides looking up to God for the, for the other strength to get to this place where I can tell my story and, and stand firm because I look at it like this. Um, a lot of them were not a positive impact on my life, of my, of my growth, of where I'm at in my chapter right now. So it's, 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 even if I don't, even if I didn't say anything, it would still give them power over me that I, I had to take my power back. At the end of the day, I had to take my power back. They were not the, any positive of me raising my children, me having the, the chapter I'm at right now. If anything, it was always whispers and gossips, gossip. Um, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't gossip when it was things that they knew that occurred to me. They wouldn't whisper and gossip when they knew the situation and circumstances that took place for the ones who did. So now I had to, be, I had to be my own voice. And I really I appreciate that. that, Melanie. I love that. And one of the things that I tell my students in class, um, cause they have all those issues going on, even between classmates. And I tell them, you know what? People are going to talk about you. They're going to say negative things about you. And it goes along with that little phrase, haters make you greater. Mm. I had to learn that when somebody is talking about you, they're taking a moment out of their life to think about you good or bad you're just that important to them at that moment so i tell them i'll talk about me i'm gonna give you something to talk about that so part, just part. know that even when they talk about you hey you is something important to them at that moment you're more important than thinking about breathing <laughs> thank you good deal audrey audrey what do you think about uh morgan three? Oh wow wow i loved it um because it took me back to my childhood, which was very uh, abusive and dysfunctional. Mm. And so, wow, and the nickname and everything, that got my attention because I had an unwarranted nickname um, from my sister. But it was, you know, that, how nicknames just stick with you, but you don't want them mm -hmm. to, you can't stand mm -hmm. or rape them. Um, so that drew me even deeper into your story, um, Morgan. And I really, really appreciate your transparency you're going to heal some a lot of people um that had you know tragedy in their childhood so continue uh, speaking out and continue sharing your story and know that god is with you thank you audrey from your lips to god's ears that's my goal yes. is to share my journey and my path with others to help them heal and at the same time it's definitely going to help me heal um more than more than anyone knows more than anyone knows yes um and you're right about the nickname i'm 49 years old and i'm having to tell a lot of people they don't call me that name anymore um and they're like well why were you talking about and when i explained to them why they said well we didn't think about we didn't never knew that was what that name meant um it was so bad that my dad didn't even know my real name until after he met me when i was 21 and i called him when he was in jail and I was like, hey, dad, this is me. And he's like, who? And I said, this is me. And then I gave him the name. And he said, I don't know who that is. And then I gave him the nickname. And he said, why you just didn't say that? And I said, hi, you're my dad. And you didn't know my real name. Wow. So wow. Everyone, I've been, and I told my kids, I said, when I pass away, do not put that name on my obituary because I'm coming to get all of y'all. <laughs> I told my parents, say, I don't want that name tied to me at all because I know others who don't know or maybe didn't think about that, but to know what the origin it came from, they can keep that and keep that in the trash where it, where it belongs. Yes, mm. this, yes, I understand that because people don't know um, the the origin, the backstory of the nickname. So I try to give my nickname wasn't it didn't mean anything near you know what you was going through, but a nickname period that you don't like. <laughs> Yeah, and people go um, back to um, they don't know the backstory. So I, I give people lead way when they you know still say my nickname because they don't know um, the history behind it. So if that helps you, thank you. I appreciate that. Good deal. Good deal. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, I get, <clears throat> did anyone want want to uh, give any type of uh, constructive? Um, instruction. 
uh, I won't even call it criticism, just to help uh, Morgan along. If I were to give anything, I, first of all, it's a great read. The, the, the challenge with your story, in my opinion, Morgan, is that it is, it is shocking. Uh, it's shocking. That's the thing about uh, your story. So when you start reading, you start listening, really listening to the details, it's just really, really, it's, it, 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 it's, it's shocking. Um, so even if you, I mean, you're a great reader. I agree with Melanie as far as the raspiness and the voice. I think it gives the uh, read that much more character. Uh, but because of the content, uh, it just, like I said, it, 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 it kind of takes your story to another level all by itself. Uh, but I guess if I were to advise anything, it would be to continue to work and just, j just to be more comfortable, uh, to be more fluid and to be as, um, uh, I, I guess, unmoved as you can and, you know, be, be confident in telling your, telling your truth. Uh, but did anyone else have anything? Uh, Laquita's going to read that. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, I would say uh, I agree with you. And, uh, and Morgan, uh, it was a great read. And because of the nature, um, there are going to be, as you get further along and you read more of your story, there are going to be pieces where you're going to be overcome with emotion. And that's okay. I would just say slow down. Don't apologize for it. Slow down. Let it happen. But work on it when it happens. Work on it. Breathe in between it, and don't let it. Don't let the emotions get to be so bad where you're unable to, where you lose your audience. Okay. So it's your your story because of the nature of your story. But I I would just keep keep doing, keep practicing. The more you the more you practice, the more you talk. Depending on the audience too, your your there will be moments of emotions. Um, slow down, keep going. Um, even if you get overcome by emotions, take a moment, breathe through it. Um, and, and, and honestly, when you, when you, when you were ending, when you ended it, you ended it in a way that I thought that, that you had gotten a bit emotional because it got quiet. So I, I was, I, you know, there was, there was the segment for it. So that's what I, I was really thinking. Um, but you were waiting for us to talk. That when that happens, what you did, it seemed like there was just a break because of the emotions, but it's gonna happen, um, and and I would tell you to anticipate that it's gonna happen. Okay. So if you know that it's gonna happen, then you'll be able to work through it. Okay. So that's that's my two points. Thank you. And, and, and Morgan, I'll, I'll throw one other thing. If there's ever um, there's a there's a person I thought he was gonna be on here tonight, and he still may be on a little later. Uh, William Wawa Washington. Um, the way that he reads, he's a he's a he's a incredible writer and reader. But the, the, the way that he reads, um, <clears throat> honestly, every time he reads, it it comes across so incredibly emotional. I mean, he's such an incredible reader. I mean, it comes across so strong. The crazy part is. It, I, honestly, half the time, and I think uh, most of the people in the room have heard him read before, um, there are times I've actually thought he was actually just breaking down as he was reading. Mm -hmm. um, but then after he gets finished reading, he'll get back to laughing and joking. He's just, he's just, he, he's just, I don't know if you would call it a method actor, but um, I mean, I wish, I wish we could hear more from Samuel, uh, but um, he is, he's just an incredible reader. So if you ever get a chance to listen to William, um, he would be a great, great person to listen to as well, as far as just bringing out the emotion for the purpose of your read. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but anyway, no, it was a great read. What were you going to say? I should thank you. I appreciate that. Um, no yeah. worries. No and worries. believe it or not, this is my first time actually on this platform, actually reading excerpts from my book. Normally when I do speaking engagements, I just did, just just speak out loud. Mm -hmm. the bits and pieces of the book to get every interest but this is my first time actually reading that excerpt from my book which actually is a big help because i'm like i want the opportunity i want the opportunity so when you reached out to me i'm like put my lips to god's 
So this helps me as well because I know it's going to be a larger platform. I put into the atmosphere that I will have to read my book. Of course, we're doing an audio book, but I will. I'm going to have to read it in front of an audience, and I want to right. have better right. skills and have a book with a little bit better energy when presenting mm -hmm. the story to others. Cool, cool. Well, good deal, man. Good deal. Thank you well, very much, sir. I appreciate all of you guys. You just, you just don't even know how much I appreciate all y'all and your feedback and um, nothing but love and, and peace and blessings to all y'all. I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. <laughs> 2023 is my year. It's going to be That's all right. of our year. It's our season. Right. I'm claiming it. That's right. That's right. That's, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Well, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next author of the I'm Morgan Reese, inviting you to tune in weekly for some empowering, enlightening, and embracing conversations to kickstart your day on Good Morning Black People.